right, video 153. Um, I used to have to fundraise when I was a kid. Um, I think most kids have to fundraise for something, you know, like for their school, usually school related. Um, you know, parents are usually involved as well. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's ever gonna be a time where we don't have to fundraise or like pitch in for something. Um, it's just how it is, I guess. But uh, there's, a, there's one fundraiser I was thinking about. We had Jump Rope for Heart in elementary school. Um, this would be back in the 80s. And uh, I think that's still around, but it's called, this time it's called Heart Heroes. My, parent, my, my kids had to do it, um, or do it through their school. And it's through, like, usually it's through their PE um, department. But raising money for the American Heart Association um, for their, I'm not sure exactly what they use it for. Like, just general fund, I guess, for heart research. <laughs> and the way they do it now is to say you just get people to donate money. You just go around and say, would you donate some money? And then, like, if you get so, so much donations, you get some kind of little trinket. You know, that's, that's the big thing. Um, but when I think about it, though, it's kind of, kind of weird because it's like you're using kids to fundraise, to get money. I don't know. It's, but when I was doing it, it was called Jump Rubber Heart. And <laughs> it was a completely different business model. Uh, it was still done through the... Um, PE curriculum, so we'd have like a couple months in the year we did jump rope. We would learn how to jump rope um, in PE class. And um, the jump ropes we used were like supplied to us by the school, and they were like heavy plastic, like kind of tubes. They're all segmented. It's like on a, on a string, but so it's like heavy duty, like plastic. And it made like a really loud noise on the, I'm not sure what kind of like on the noium floor, whatever it was that we were practicing in our big area. But it would go, I mean, it was crazy. But it was really, I remember it being really hurt when you got hit with it. <laughs> like, um, but we'd learn how to jump rope. And we'd do jump roping. Like, and then the thing we were supposed to do is like get pledges um, from friends and family or whoever, strangers, whatever, um, to pledge to, you know, for every minute or so we jump roped, they'd pledge like 10 cents or a dollar or whatever. Um, and then the big thing at the end was like, there was a jump rope-a-thon. And so we'd all be in the room, like in a big area, um, like a dining hall or whatever. And just keep jump roping. So the kids would have to just jump rope. And just jump rope as much as you could jump rope. <laughs> for as long as you could go, I guess. <laughs> and then by the end, like, you tally up your minutes. And so like, and then go collect your, your money from other, everybody that pledged for you. Um, my kids don't do that. I, mean, I don't think they, people still do that. Um, they just ask for money. There's no like jump roping or like jump rope a thon. Um, but yeah, it is kind of odd that it was uh, used f as PE, but it's also to raise money for a specific organization. I don't know. It's, maybe I'm just jaded. But uh, the other thing I was thinking about, um, we used to actually used to sell magazine subscriptions. This was in band. Band fundraisers now they sell like donuts and stuff, but like <laughs> when I was like it was like the early early nineties, so it was like uh, middle school. Um, in our band, we'd have um, this guy come in from some kind of fundraising company, and he would like get this huge, awesome like kind of presentation, and it was like real polished and like slick, and like all the perks that we could get if we sold so many subscriptions. You know, of course the band would get a cut, and then like the company would get a cut, and. Us kids didn't get nothing. <laughs> we got like trinkets, and he. But I remember there was something to do with a hundred dollar bill. Like he'd like pretend like pull a hundred dollar bill out of someone's ear or something, like real cash money. Um, yeah. So there's like a lot of incentives, like kind of dangling, you know, the, the carrot, you know, try to. Yeah, let's go sell these magazine subscriptions. But most kids had like parents that would take their thing or their forms into work with them and like kind of just ask their friends. My parents weren't doing that. They didn't, they didn't say, you know, they said, if you want to, you know, do this, you got to do it. So I had to go, I remember going door to door in my neighborhood, cold calling, you know, knocking on people's doors. You know, I was like 10, 11, 12, asking if they want to buy magazine subscriptions. I mean, it was like, there's like a catalog you had so they could see what kind of magazines there were, but like a year's worth of like, I don't know, New, US News and World Report or Time Magazine or something. It was just kind of weird to think about it now. Like, no, that wouldn't work at all. That wouldn't work at all. I wouldn't, I mean, I'd support some kid's band, you know, if they were selling donuts, but like magazine subscriptions or like some kind of, <laughs> I don't know, periodicals. Yeah, this is before the internet, obviously. So magazines were a thing still, I guess. Um, yeah, 
I wasn't very good at selling. I had a pitch, but I would get so nervous and be like, well, I got to do this. And it's like, why do I have to do this? Why am I being put to work to raise money for the band in a school system that it's got plenty of money for other stuff, for athletics, you know? I don't know. But I mean, athletic parents also have to raise money too. So everybody has to raise money. So there's, somehow there's never enough money for things. And the kids are the ones that have to work for it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't even know what we were trying to buy. Like, as, as a band, you know, like the Pazitz Middle School band, like what we were in need of. We had, a, we had a, lots, of other, lots of stuff. We had uniforms. We had, you know, a big program. And I don't know what we needed money for that I had to go out and cold call and sell magazine subscriptions. I, I was not a good salesman. I'm not a good salesman, like, to this day. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm good at, like, being charming, I guess, if I, if I want to be or if I'm in a position to be. But I'm not, like, a salesman. I don't have time for that because I, I detest people trying to sell me something. If I get the feeling if someone's trying to, you know, to smooth talk me, it, I don't like it at all. So I don't want to be that guy. I'm just not that type, I guess. Anyway, yeah. I guess we used to have a little bit more lenient <laughs> view of child labor <laughs> back in the day. And jump rope us till we passed out and <laughs> make us sell magazines door to door. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want my kids going out door to door now. I mean, even my neighborhood, I mean, we know the people, but it's like, I don't want them going door to door, random people, like asking if they want to buy magazines. Yeah, times have changed. <laughs> anyway, that's my video for today. Um, uh, getting almost to like halfway through the whole year of making videos. Um, but I'm keeping my streak alive. Just one video at a time. I can't plan ahead too much. So uh, otherwise, uh, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourself. We'll talk tomorrow, okay?